Check out today's work of fan art. It's a fan-made servant, not of a historical figure, but the character Dragon Slayer Ornstein from Dark Souls. The idea is that they'd be summoned by none other than Ayako Mitsuzuri. I love tomboys, so that could be a really cool spin-off. Thank you, Iceland669. Welcome back to Otaku Daikun. Daichan here. Today, I wanted to talk about fan edits, a process wherein fans of a certain work take original footage from a film or TV show and try to reconstruct it to create not necessarily a better version, but certainly a different take on the material. By far, the most well-known and influential fan edits come from the Star Wars franchise, kicked off by an edit of the first prequel film known as the Phantom Edit. In essence, this was a version of the film that removed bits like explaining midichlorians, redundant exposition, and unnecessary comic relief from the likes of Jar Jar. Another interesting thing the Phantom Edit is known for is editing moments of the film where Anakin accidentally winds up succeeding, and making his actions appear more deliberate to fit in line with the idea that he's a prodigious Force user. Personally, I always figured his accidents were subconscious manifestations of his Force power, but the idea still stands that fans may use editing as a means of reinterpreting their perception of an established character. Of course, fan edits aren't limited to reinterpreting films. It can also be a means of restoring a film, as we see with the despecialized edition of the original trilogy. Since the theatrical cuts of episodes 4, 5, and 6 were never included on the trilogy's Blu-ray and subsequent releases, fans took it into their own hands to give it an HD release. It was a painstaking effort that involved meshing unchanged parts of the special editions with older footage remastered from DVD footage and archived film prints. At first glance, these fan edits may come off as arrogant, and I suppose they can be, depending on the context. It seems a lot like when artists on Tumblr or Twitter try to fix other people's art, but honestly, it's all about attitude. In general, I think it's totally fine for an artist to make their own versions of characters, such as reinventing a white character to be black, or vice versa. It's great, as long as people realize it's their own headcanon. It only becomes a problem when people use it to shame or condemn an artist for their creative vision. As far as fan edits go, it can often be a case of a fan wanting to see how a film would feel from a different context. A what-if scenario, if you will. Regardless of whether they believe their edit is superior to the original, many fans acknowledge that what they made is merely an alternative. While certain fan edits are definitely meant to fix things they found problematic in a film, others are more humble, created out of a genuine love for the source. So, where does anime fit into all of this? Perhaps more than any other medium, anime is ripe for editing. The popularity of fan subs means that many fans not only watch their favorite anime, but also have digital archives of them. AMVs are the love child of this convenience. By pairing clips to music, fans can alter the aesthetic or meaning behind their favorite shows, and some more creative AMVs can tell their own stories. I've seen characters from different franchises edited together into a single universe, often to ship characters that canonically never meet. One of my favorite AMVs to reinterpret their source material is a trailer for My Neighbor Totoro, made in the form of a horror film. It transforms the lovable beast into a monster, integrated with suspense. It's hard to call something so playful arrogant. Of course, there are also abridged series, where fans use original footage to create a parody. They can either follow the source material, inserting jokes along the way, or they can completely change the pace and progression of the story. Now, when I refer to fan edits, I'm actually not including AMVs or a bridge series. Rather, their existence is more of a testament to how common it is for fans to toy with anime footage. As such, one would definitely expect more traditional edits from the medium as well. Upon doing some research, I was definitely able to find various edits, created for different reasons, that I find interesting enough to share with you. Heck, one of these edits just so happens to involve fate, so I have to talk about it now! <laughs> the most common anime fan edits I learned about take long-running shows like DBZ and Naruto and chop out all the filler episodes. 
In a sense, we might consider these edits more faithful to the manga, since filler episodes usually arise from the anime studios trying to profit off a show while its manga is still in production. Other times, they're an acknowledgement that filler can be a real slog. Even anime original series, like Nadia, suffer from filler. For Nadia's 30th anniversary, a fan edit was made that significantly shortens the arc where the characters are stranded on a deserted island. It's perhaps the show's least enjoyed segment, containing episodes ugly enough that I've talked about them in my video on off-model animation. Sadly, in a similar vein, I've seen edits that try and remove fan service from various anime. Just as you'd expect, these edits remove any form of gratuitous moments or camera angles that aren't necessary for the story. I suppose for some people, this can allow them to enjoy otherwise pervy anime without having to engage in something they don't enjoy. It's the anime equivalent of removing a certain topping from your pizza. As long as you aren't pissed at fans who enjoy the fan service, I suppose all is well. After all, there are also edits that contain only an anime's fan service segments. I figure if one is valid, the other should be too. Not all fan edits need to remove content, however. Sometimes they involve adding elements. Such is the case for Mighty Doom Giver's Berserk Redux. This edit combines scenes from the older 90s anime with parts from the Golden Age films, resulting in an experience that provides more context and development than either the two anime did on their own. It's a very bare-bones edit that swaps between the film's widescreen aspect ratio and the show's 4x3 shape. Some may find that jarring, but I'd rather that than sacrifice the visual quality of one source to fit the shape of the other. That's the kind of crap that Viz Media did to its Naruto releases. It's just awful. Technically, one could recreate this edit just by swapping between the sources manually, but having it as a singular fan edit makes it all the more enjoyable. In a similar manner, there exists edits to Neon Genesis Evangelion that try to combine its film, The End of Evangelion, with moments from the anime's final two episodes. Both are depictions of the third impact and the commencement of instrumentality told either literally or symbolically. Fan edits combine the two so that rather than watching the anime's ending, then rewatching it in the film, fans can jump straight from episode 24 into a single grand finale. One potential edit that hasn't been done yet, but easily could be done, is a version of the Heaven's Feel movies that includes the first episode of Unlimited Blade Works. Rather than showing a quick montage like the first film does, it could just be an extra long movie. Most people watching Heaven's Feel already watched UBW prior, but this kind of edit might be nice for someone who is rewatching the movies only after a long time has passed. Given that anime is typically dubbed in both Japanese and then later English, the possibility exists to combine the two for a bilingual experience. There are many anime that have Japanese actors trying to speak English rather poorly. It can be jarring since the characters in question are supposed to be fluent. When these shows get dubbed, oftentimes the bilingual nature gets lost, with localizers putting everything in English. One thing fans are curious to see, however, is a version where people speak both fluent Japanese and English when it's called for in the story. Such is the case for the Psycho Pass movie. It has an English eradication edition that uses the Japanese audio as a base, but substitutes lines from the dub to replace the laughably bad English lines. In other situations, anime directors try to play with the story's chronology, and it's debatable whether these creative decisions are more confusing than enjoyable. Fan edits can be used to reconstruct a creator's vision, putting the story together in chronological fashion to better understand it. After all, sometimes what is more dramatic is not necessarily more effective. Two anime that I think would be right for this kind of edit are Kara no Kyokai and The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. The Kara no Kyokai films were screened out of order, perhaps in an attempt to first show viewers the status quo at Gara no Do before explaining how we got there. In other words, and media res. While it's very easy to just rearrange the movies into their proper order, editing could be used to be even more seamless, rearranging the scenes within the films themselves. This could potentially make the film Paradox Spiral way less confusing. This is just an idea I had. I don't think anyone's actually done it yet. As for Haruhi, both the original 2006 and 2009 seasons were broadcast out of order, perhaps to make the show itself like a puzzle to solve. 
Chronologically, however, viewers will not only have to arrange the order of episodes within each season, but also between the two seasons. Technically, watching the show in order doesn't require any actual editing, but the idea of customizing your viewing experience is still the same. More experimental is an incredibly trimmed edit of ReZero that removes every one of Subaru's failed timelines, only showing his successful runs from between checkpoints. The majority of the development and narrative comes from those failed timelines, making this edit far from superior, but it's fascinating nonetheless. Saving the best for last is the idea of a Dean Stay Night Definitive Edition. As you probably already know, the 2006 Fate Stay Night anime by Studio Dean is a bit of a mess. For the most part, the series focuses on the visual novel's Fate route, the one that follows Best Girl Saber. Rather than picking a single route and sticking to it, however, Dean attempted to incorporate aspects of the other routes as well. Some of these bits, like Reen attacking Shiro at school for not taking the war seriously, fit pretty well in the narrative despite being from Unlimited Blade Works. As such, the main issues rise right toward the end of the show, where Dean tried to give Medea and Sakura a much bigger role than they ever had in Saber's route. It involves Medea and her master, Mr. Kuzuki, kidnapping Sakura as a second vessel for the Grail. They take her to a hidden dimension or reality marble of sorts, and to save Sakura, Shiro, Rin, and Saber have to enter the space through a portal. There, they fight against Medea's familiars. Saber finishes her battle with Kojiro Sasaki, a battle that only concludes in Unlimited Blade Works, and Shiro fights against Kuzuki with some actual competence, even though the fate route Shiro isn't capable of that. Medea toys with Rin, making Sakura attack her, and they do a rather anticlimactic reenactment of their encounter in Heaven's Feel. Then and only then does Gilgamesh show up and kill both Badea and Kuzuki, similar to how Archer kills them in Unlimited Blade Works. Thanks to this chaotic weave of elements, Dean Stay Night doesn't fully qualify as a proper Fate adaptation. Because of this, various fans have taken to the show to make their own fan edits, hoping to make it more faithful. A lot of this is pretty easy to accomplish. Most of the show's filler comes straight out of Unlimited Blade Works, and you can cut it out entirely without consequence. That Medea section, however, is far trickier. See, in the Fate route, Medea only plays a small role. She shows up at the Emiya residence for a surprise attack. Shiro and Reen try to protect Elia from Medea's Dragon Tooth Warriors, and while Artoria wants to duel Medea on her own, Shiro forbids it. Turns out, this is a good call, since Medea's got her rule breaker, and charging in blindly will result in losing Saber altogether. This leads to a stalemate that is broken when Gilga shows up and mortally wounds Medea for daring to attack his property. You know, Saber. He then leaves, and while we never see it in the first novel, Hollow Ataraxia clarifies that Gilga then goes to the Ryudo Temple to kill both Kuzuki and Kojiro. This means that the faint route never reveals Medea's master is Kuzuki at all. She attacks Shiro on his own turf, rather than having the party go to her domain. I thought that between the cavernous portal, Kojiro, Kuzuki, and bondage Sakura, it would be impossible to cleanly get past Medea's defeat. Among the edits I found online, I watched one by SSJOKG that I feel does the best job that could be done. Basically, it has Medea use some sort of spell perhaps a bounded field, like she does in the Unlimited Blade Works anime, to whisk Shiro, Rin, and Saber away to her domain. It's an incredibly sudden and unexplained transition, but in theory, it does seem like something Medea could do. The edit includes fighting the Skelly Boys, but skips everything pertaining to Kojiro, Kuzuki, and Sakura. It's sloppy, given the lack of transitional shots or dialogue, and how the music keeps cutting between tracks. But I did find it surprising how it was possible to more or less get through the scene, obscuring Kuzuki and Sakura from view. An official anime would never be so jarring and poorly paced, but as a theoretical edit, it does succeed better than I thought it would. When it comes to whether to actually watch this version over Dean's Day Night proper, both are enough of a mess that you still have to accept imperfections either way. And of course, no Fate Route adaptation will be complete without the Rialta Nua last episode, which only exists in animated form at Tight Moon's museum in Japan. Sadly, no amount of fan editing can give us the proper Fate Route we all want to see from Ufotable. Nonetheless, I commend the effort. With that, I want to ask you guys about fan edits. 
Whether it's an edit of an anime or anything else, do you have any fan edits that you enjoy or find especially interesting? Do you find the idea of editing a work like this beneficial or perhaps just toxic and harmful? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this channel, help me beat the algorithm by liking, commenting, and sharing the video, subscribing to Otaku Daikun, and most of all, smashing that notification bell so you don't miss out on all of my anime discussion, lore, or Let's Play content. If you want to support me directly, there are now three ways that all provide the same benefits. You can click join here on YouTube, or join Patreon or Subscribestar for access to exclusive vids and early access. As always, celebrate your fandom!